Bank of New York Mellon is moving closer to rolling out custody service for the Bitcoin and Ether held by ETF clients. This is after a re review enabled the company to avoid treating the assets as a balance sheet liability. And BlackRock has filed an amendment to its Bitcoin ETF that narrows the window for Bitcoin withdrawals for the ETF's custodian, which is Coinbase, to within 12 hours. Can you explain what's going on here behind specifically here BlackRock's amended filing when you think about that 24-hour rule? There's no way to know exactly what triggered this or why exactly this happened. I mean, Robbie, when you talk to him after this, I'd love to hear what he exactly has to say. But a lot of the times these changes in, in language and amended documents are just like, we're increasing scrutiny in this. We want to make sure we have this at all times or just adding, you know, another level of detail to what's already in the agreement. It might have been something that was already happening, but they're, they're already doing things within 12 hours. They just want to make sure it's officially in writing. So there's no way exactly to know. But there's been a lot of rumors around like BlackRock not actually holding the Bitcoin which I just think is complete conspiracy theory. They own the Bitcoin. Um, but there's been a whole lot of concern around what's actually being held by these ETFs, and specifically around BlackRock, because BlackRock's the largest asset manager in the world, and they own the largest uh, Bitcoin ETF now at over $20 billion in assets. You know, Jim, another topic that comes up a lot when you talk about custody of Bitcoin with these ETFs is a lot of people really think that the issuers need multiple custodians. Um, I'm curious how common that is in traditional assets. I, I, I guess not very. Is it, you know, is this a new thing where ETF issuers are expected to have multiple custodians? Uh, I think it is mo it's largely a new thing, right? I mean, you do have separate custodians for different types of assets in some ETFs. So if you're holding more than just equities, you might have a cash custodian and a separate custodian for equities or bonds, you name it, things like that. But it's not super common to have this. There have been talks of gold ETFs kind of doing this, holding in a different vaults, uh, vaults across the world. Um, but for the most part, all of them hold them in one vault. Here, I think it makes a little more sense to diversify your custodian relationship, at least for some of these issuers. It could be like a marketing and selling point. Look, we don't have all of our Bitcoin stored at Coinbase. We store it at BitGo and Gemini and these other different issuer uh, custodians. Um, so I think, again, it could be a marketing point. And I also think it's a risk, right? Because Coinbase is the largest custodian of Bitcoin in the world, the largest custodian of uh, Bitcoin held in ETFs, too. So it makes sense to be a little bit concerned about it. But I mean, Coinbase has been around for over 10 years now, I think 12 years almost. So um, they know what they're doing. BlackRock is a 10 plus trillion dollar asset manager. They're not going to risk their reputation on these types of things. They're crossing their T's, darting their eyes. Again, I understand why people say don't trust verify. But if you're going to trust anyone, it kind of makes sense to understand that these guys are not going to be taking undue risks.